So the energy code is looking for an airtight house. And the majority of the places where we have air leakage is not necessarily in the cavity. It's where building assemblies come together. And the energy code says that in that general section that we need to seal all breaks, joints, and penetrations through the building envelope. So in this case, although it's not specifically referenced there, we have to remember that this is a break or joint in the building thermal envelope. So sealing the bottom plate to the subfloor in some fashion, in this case they use an expanded foam there, this is in essence a requirement of the code here. While we're here, I also wanted to point out that this fabric that's being used uh, to hold this insulation in place, uh, we can't confuse this fabric to, to be a vapor retarder. It is not a vapor retarder. It is simply a fabric that allows air to escape as they pressurize this cavity with insulation uh, so that they can fully fill the cavity with a dense packed uh, material. So it is not a vapor retarder. They need to figure out how they're going to comply with the vapor retarder requirement of the code separately. We see a lot of different unique things in these houses. And in this corner, we've got all kinds of things happening. We have a roof assembly next to a floor assembly in a room above. So we have this area here that's unventilated roof area that's been insulated correctly, that's defining our building thermal envelope. We have our true exterior wall to the unconditioned ambient air outside. And we have the wall over here that is separating our house from the garage here. So in terms of defining our building thermal envelope, we need to understand how we might have to depict that on our building thermal envelope depiction that's required by the code. Basically that red line test that you might be hearing more and more about. In this case, it, they look like they've done a really nice job insulating this roof assembly. Um, and when we get over to the exterior wall assembly, they've done a nice job with the insulation, but I have some questions that, because it, it's not really defined well, how do you build an insulated header and an insulated header that actually works here? So the, the engineer and architect maybe designed this insulated header, uh, but they probably didn't design it the way that it was actually framed here. We get these extra pieces uh, these pieces here probably are not needed here, maybe just the one here. Uh, and then you would have a cripple going up here, which would give you additional space uh, to insulate. Remember that wood has an R value of one per inch, so we've got about an R five and a half. Uh, in this cavity and in this cavity, we have our blown uh, insulation product. So in the true two by six cavity, we have closer to an R23. So when we say that we're building an R23 wall, are we really building an R23 wall? When you take into account 16 inches on center framing, that goes down to about half of that. So maybe like an R12 to, to, um, to 13. And then when we take into account the window to wall ratio, that goes down even further there because the U value of this window at a 0 0.30 versus uh, the R value of this assembly, it's so different there. And if we subtract the, the window area out, we get less and less insulated wall here. And the total overall R value of these assemblies are actually in probably the eight to 10 range uh, versus the blown R23 that we think that we're uh, insulating to. So you'll also notice here that there's a pink gasket here. This is actually a type of sill seal. Uh, but the sill seal works pretty well when you put a drywall against it and you screw it in place to create a gasket uh, for this, this floor system here so that it's going to be an airtight floor system and the insulation is going to perform well there.